We are in the midst of a myopia epidemic affecting 35% of the human population. That means there are 3.4 billion nearsighted people worldwide. So these are people who can't see 20 feet in front of them or pass a driver's test without glasses. Many people don't realize that when kids are inside using smartphones and tablets instead of playing outside in the natural sunlight, myopia worsens. Numbers affected increase each year with an estimated 4.8 billion by the year 2050. The other half of the population is hyperopic or farsighted, meaning they can see far away, but not up close. So you'll recognize them at restaurants, holding their menus out, trying to figure out what the appetizers are. Unfortunately, due to the aging lens inside our eyes, everyone needs reading glasses or bifocals eventually. So for those of you keeping score at home, that means close to 100% of people will eventually need some sort of prosthetic device to see. Isn't it interesting that when someone has a challenge preventing them from walking 20 feet, we routinely, whenever possible, offer them a solution to their problem, such as a knee replacement, so that, they, so that they don't have to rely on prosthetics. But for people who can't see 20 feet, we expect them to rely on prosthetics such as glasses indefinitely. And yet, we can fix myopia and hyperopia. In fact, we can reduce these defects on a mass scale. The first time in human history we can fix something that affects such a large percentage of the world. And it's my passion to do exactly that. The old paradigm looks like this. Glasses are first prescribed around age 7 to 10 on average. When kids are a little older, they can have contacts. They continue with these modalities until their 40s and 50s when the aging lens inside the eye requires them to use reading glasses or bifocals. They continue with those until their cataracts develop. And everyone gets cataracts if you live long enough. The average age in the United States is 73. People may choose to have their vision corrected at the same time their cataract is fixed. But if they don't, they're still in bifocals. It's considered perfectly acceptable that someone be dependent on glasses from ages 7 to 73, despite their costs and limitations. And yet we can fix vision for over 80% of these people. When myopia is first diagnosed, there are interventions that can control and slow its progression. Lifestyle modifications such as decreased screen time and increased exposure to natural light have been shown to be effective. There are also medicated eye drops and specialty contacts available. And when these young people's eyes stop developing, typically late teens to early 20s, many of them may have a vision correction procedure. Everyone has heard of LASIK, but there are six other procedures too. These seven can be, provide, can be combined to provide crisp, clear vision, reframing the paradigm, and changing the world. So the new paradigm looks like this. When myopia is first diagnosed and glasses prescribed, ages 7 to 10, myopia control is started at the same time to slow its progression. Once the eyes are done developing late teens to early 20s, most are able to have one of the seven vision correction procedures. And because we slowed down the progression, the treatment they need isn't as significant. So these seven technologies can provide crisp, clear vision until the aging lens needs to be replaced, typically in our 50s or older, after which people can see far and near and never develop cataracts. Changing the world starts with one person at a time. The individual benefits are significant. They may be grouped into three categories, functional, safety, and financial. Athletes figured out the functional benefits years ago. Many of them have had their vision corrected to improve their performance. And when first responders, such as 
Firefighters are in an emergency situation. The last thing they want to be worried about is their vision. It's a matter of life and death. Same is true for the military. The U.S. Armed Forces provides vision correction procedures for its active duty members, and it's considered a major tactical advantage on the battlefield. These same groups have realized the safety benefits of the new paradigm compared to the old one. Consider that the lifetime risk of a contact lens associated infection increases by 10% per year of use. I mean, how many of us have slept in our contacts once or twice over the years? I mean, almost everybody, right? Compare that to the risk of an infection from a vision correction procedure, which is less than one in 2,500. So of course, there are risks that need to be considered and discussed, but they have to be compared to the alternatives. In the modern era, the risk of vision loss from a contact lens associated infection exceeds that of a vision correction procedure. Now let's think about the financial impact. If a 20-year-old college student spends the average of $950 a year, and that's the average in the United States, on glasses, contact lenses, contact lens solutions, visits to the eye doctor, and other associated expenses, she will spend over $42,000 by the time she's 45 years old, just on her vision. In contrast, if she has her vision fixed at age 20, she will save over $38,000 over the same time span and have the safety and functional benefits over 25 years. So let's take these numbers and think a little more broadly. In a city of a million people, 350,000 suffer from myopia. If conservatively, each of these people could save on average $20,000 by fixing their vision instead of paying the ongoing costs, the cumulative economic savings is over $7 billion. And that's just for one mid-sized American city and only for people with myopia. That's not including the other 60% who can't see the menu at the restaurant. If we take these numbers and apply them to the broader United States and beyond, the economic impact is staggering. And in an era of escalating healthcare costs, a solution that provides an improved quality of life at a savings for the individual and society is simply too compelling to ignore. So let's think even bigger. Let's think globally. Of the world's seven and a half billion people, six billion live in the developing world. 75% of those ages 18 to 45, the years of peak productivity, do not have access to glasses or contacts. Loss production from this group exceeds $250 billion every year. And the psychological and social impact of not being able to contribute meaningfully to their communities is perhaps even more significant. Glasses are a cheap solution, but they need to be maintained and replaced, which are difficult in the developing world. Contact lenses are an option, but they require education, hygiene, close follow-up, all of which are difficult. Imagine using vision correction to ease their burden making them independent, productive members of their communities. Vision correction has been proven safe and effective for almost 30 years. It has the highest satisfaction rate of any elective procedure in the history of humanity. So why are so many people stuck in the old paradigm? And what can we do to reframe them into the new one? The answer is, it's already happening. You see, we humans are not used to quick solutions that work, particularly when it comes to healthcare, right? We expect everything to be overly complicated, expensive, ineffective. We fixate on the outliers, the people who didn't have the experience they had hoped to have, and we say, see, I told you it was too good to be true. Completely ignoring the big picture, the overwhelmingly positive statistics. We're also skeptical of things that are easy, I mean, how often does someone of education and authority say to you, 
would it be okay with you if we made your life easier for less money? <laughs> we assume such things don't exist, but they do. Those of us passionate about the new paradigm are working hard to accelerate its adoption. Seven years ago, I had the honor of being one of the founders of the Refractive Surgery Alliance, an international organization of surgeons and optometrists dedicated to bringing the benefits of vision correction to as many people worldwide as possible through education, access, and affordability. Some of our members are tackling this problem head on. For example, at the Telganga Eye Institute in Nepal, surgeons are being taught the most modern vision correction techniques in the world so that they may treat thousands of people each year. And the standard of care is just as high as it is in the United States. It's just one small example of how we're reducing a genetic defect on a mass scale, reframing the paradigm in a more effective and affordable way. And look, I'm not here to bash glasses and contacts. They are a tried and true method of seeing clearly and an excellent choice for many. But does anyone really think we'll still be wearing glasses and contacts in the future? I mean, look at the people on Star Trek. No one is wearing glasses. <laughs> Historians are gonna look back at our era and marvel that we were willing to get up in the morning and put pieces of plastic in our eyes just so we could function when we could have had our problem fixed. You know, millennials in the United States have figured this out. 70% of them have had or are planning to have vision correction. Many of their parents had their eyes fixed years ago. So as the new paradigm becomes the regular way, vision correction becomes a rite of passage, similar to how braces are viewed by people who want straighter teeth. When the appropriate age is reached, the defect is corrected. When our knees prevent us from walking 20 feet, we get them fixed. When our eyes prevent us from seeing 20 feet, we can now do the same. Thank you.